for your host for the Shed Can I Vent G show, Shed G. Thank you, thank you. No, really, that's enough, that's enough. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first taping of the Shed Can I Vent G show. Give it up for yourselves for being here. We are filming right here at the beautiful place, Jazzy Jacks at the Denver Pavilions. Once again, give it up for Jazzy Jacks for letting us be right here. We got a good time, man. We're going to have a good time. I see everybody is in here. We got a lot of people. Anybody from Denver make some noise? Yes. If you are not from Denver, make some noise. Now, I'm going to let you know why I'm saying can I vent G. Now, when I say can I vent, I want y'all to say vent, brother, vent. Can I vent? Now, I, I don't know if y'all heard that at home, but uh, if you are from Denver, make some noise. Okay. If you are not from Denver, make some noise. See, we got to clarify some stuff. You know what I mean? Everybody always don't want to represent from Denver. I'm from Denver all day. You know what I mean? That's one thing I represent is Denver. Y'all got to understand when y'all, <laughs> we ask you, like, I'm going to give you an example. I, I met this girl. I said, um, where are you from? She said, I'm from Chicago. I'm like, you're from Chicago? Yeah. I was like, word, word, word. How long you been in Denver? 25 years. <laughs> If you went to junior high school, if you went to Smiley, you from Denver. If you knew what Manual High School was before it closed, you from Denver. <laughs> if you remember Stapleton Airport, <laughs> you from Denver. You know what I mean? Y'all act like y'all remember Stapleton. Stapleton Airport, that DIA, they got all the white tin and stuff. To me, is it me or does it look like a whole bunch of Ku Klux Klansmen when you, you driving up there like, wait a minute. And I got that big old, that big old Bronco with red eyes. I'm like, oh no, no, uh-uh, uh-uh, I can't do that. I remember Stapleton Airport when you could just run to the plane when you miss it. Hey, wait, stop, stop. Hold up, I got your bags. Go and get on the plane, baby. That's Denver. Denver to me is Celebrities Funplex Center. That's Denver. Look, y'all don't remember Celebrities Funplex Center. Celebrities, you can what? You, <laughs> you can bowl. You can play pool, karaoke. You been a too much, too little, too late to ever try again, you know? And you can be on that pool. You remember the pool when you went swimming? You remember the slide? Man, you be riding that slide, you go down and run out of water. You be like, oh. <laughs> you stuck over Colorado Boulevard like, man, this is not sexy. And that's another thing, man. Being from Denver is a blessing thing, man. I don't care what nobody say. But the one thing is, you know, when you, whenever I travel and do a lot of stuff, you see people who try to represent Denver. You know, they represent their hometown. You're like, you from New York? New York, what? Stand up, New York. Boop, 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 boop. I'm like, grandmama, just, you know? Then you have people, where you from? I'm from New Orleans, baby. What we do right here, baby. That's that, that, that Stone Third Ward, baby. Like, where are you from? Denver. <laughs> that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not sexy. <laughs> and they be like, well, yo, you a white boy, ain't you? No, I ain't no white boy. I don't believe in no, no black or white thing. You know what I'm saying? In Denver, it's, I think it's a learned behavior. We all get along. We live around each other. So it's a learned behavior from our environment. You know what I'm saying? That's what I know, and that's what I think it is about Denver. And this is when I realized I was white. <laughs> <laughs> When, um, <laughs> when I got my heart broken, you know, any boy would get their heart broken, you know, at the age I was in middle school, at Smiley Middle School. Any boy get his heart broken my age, he gonna sing a song like, is this the end? Are you my friend? No, not me. I was on my bike talking about, huh? I just died in your arms tonight. Must have been. Oh, I'm the only one know that. 
It's all right. But we got a great show for y'all here this evening. Are y'all ready to get this show started? Let me hear you say, yeah. yeah. Or let me hear you say, yeah. yeah. So when we come back, we're going to have my girl, Miss Carla Ladd, on the stage. So we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you don't go anywhere, and we're going to vent. Can I vent? All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Say Can I Vent G Show. Right here, my first guest, I have this young lady who's been doing a lot of things for the Denver community, and she just wrote a book, and we're going to talk all about it. Y'all, give it up for Miss Carla Lang. Thank you. Miss Carla. Thank you. How you doing? You all right? I'm okay. I have a little cold, but I'm all right. I'm yes, sitting. This is... I think we're far enough away where you won't. Oh, it's all right. Me. I got Perel. That. <laughs> We quick to do that, you know, that's it. <laughs> so, well, you look good, and, and welcome to the Shade Can I Vent G show, and I really appreciate you coming. I am so glad to be here. Thanks for Yeah, so we, I got a couple of questions I want to ask you. Um, I know the first thing is, um, I know you've been doing a lot for the community. The first time I heard your name, I saw with, with the Denver Black Pages when I saw that and all of that. Tell me about how that came about. Well, I started the Denver Black Pages back in 2000. I launched the site in December of 2000, actually. So we just had a 10-year anniversary. And um, it started because I was working for Lockheed Martin, and I had just gotten here not that long um, before I started it. And I really needed to connect with the community. For some reason, I felt like I needed to connect with the Denver community. And with our, the black community being so dispersed, mm -hmm. I thought the internet would be the best way to do that. So I started the DenverBlackPages.com. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And it's been going strong. Um, it has been. For a long. I, I was just at a seminar that you had. Tell me about the seminar. At the, uh, the Mountain Region Black Economic Summit is where you were. Yes. Yeah. What, what was the, uh, is there an acronym? Because that's long. That's why I can't. MRB, yes. Mr. There it B's. Is. Yeah. Um, and that was last June. We mm -hmm. are taking a hiatus from that this mm -hmm. year. But it's an economic development summit right. for African-American business owners. Right. And mm -hmm. I, I was there. And it, it was a, I mean, I, I learned some things, you know what I mean? And, 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 and it's a great thing to see you doing everything that you're doing. But then when I saw the book, the book, y'all, is called If She Can Beat Me Rockin', She Can Have My Chair. Now, yeah, if she right, can right, beat right. me rocking, she can have my chair. Now, tell me, that, like, like, explain to, to me about this book. Well, the book is really, um, it's just a compilation of sage advice, wisdom from some of our elders, um, all the stuff that's in there is from my grandmother, but I'm sure she didn't originate any of it. I'm sure you've heard some things from your grandmother yes, that are in Lord. there. Oh, you might not have heard of, you know, she can beat me rocking, but... Yeah. Uh, some other things in there. Everybody can relate to some things that their grandmother or auntie or, you know, Mimi or somebody yeah. taught them. Yeah, so. you know, uh, Big Mama. Big Mama. Big Mama. You know, Big Mama, a uh, baby. <laughs> baby like 104 years old, but we call her baby. Praise <laughs> God. <You know? laughs> baby. Well, that's good. So what are some of the things that, that really stick out in this book? Because, I mean, when I was reading it, I was like, oh, that's my grandmama. The remedies and stuff. Right, you know, you know, right. Touch on some of those. Well, I didn't really get into the remedies because those are kind of those old wives' tales, you know, like writing a baby's name on an egg so that they're, they're, they won't have so much trouble teething. I don't right. know if anybody's heard that before. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that stuck out with me, for me, was um, just how she would always make us, you know, you know how some parents let their kids stay in the room while they're mm -hmm. talking, and mm -hmm. she would always tell us to stay out of grown folks' mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. And so we couldn't just sit there and then interject. Mm -hmm. You know, I would try to sit and be quiet and listen and get some mm -hmm. good gossip, but mm -hmm. when she noticed <laughs> me or if I happened to laugh or something, mm -hmm. she'd make me get up yeah, and leave the room. So. You want to stay out of grown folks' stay business. Out of, yeah. Get, <laughs> yeah, you know how they know. My so grandma, she was like that too. She, when I read this, and I was looking at a lot of stuff in the book, and some of this stuff is like my grandmother. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, but the main thing is, it's about um, life lessons. It is. You know what I mean? So it's like some of the, sometimes we learn things from our elders, and that's one thing that we don't, some of the youth now, they don't respect the elders. Mm -hmm. Now, um, in, in, in your words, or, or what do you think that, that we're lacking in, in today's society? Well, I think we really, our young girls really need 
our older women, our elder women to come alongside them and really train them. They're, mm -hmm. they're not being trained anymore mm -hmm. uh, about dress, about what's you know modest or decent even, mm -hmm. not even modest, but at least decent. Mm -hmm. um, as I sit here with my, my go-go boots. I no, but those, those sharp, though. There's a difference <laughs> for being classy and tacky. You know what I'm talking about? That's classy there. Yeah. At least you got some on up under them. You know well, what I mean? Yeah. Some I people don't have nothing. You be like, uh, them. what you doing? <laughs> it's 20 degrees, but you showing all this skin. Your thighs gonna catch cold. <laughs> exactly. Right. So, so yeah, that was one of the things with that was her um was uh, save something for the imagination was right. was her thing. So yes. she didn't allow us to just walk out of the house and just anything we wanted to. Yes. yes. So if we if, if um, we wanted to get the book, if somebody wanted to get the book, how would they do it? Is there a website or? It's on Amazon.com or my website, CarlaLad.com. Mm -hmm. And then Carla that way, Ladd. if you want it signed, I can sign it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, is you send it to them signed? Signed well, on my right. website, not on Amazon. Though, yes, but, but on, on yours. Website. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Knock out the middleman. Go to hers. Exactly. And that's CarlaLad.com. Yes, so, so what can we expect from you from the future? I mean, you're, you know, we always see each other at a lot of these business functions where they be serving chicken. You know what I mean? That's all they be serving is chicken. I'll be asking you for the hot <laughs> Did sauce. Did we serve chicken last time? No, you, no, you, were, yes. <laughs> well, you know. But you had roasted potatoes though. They was good. <laughs> It was good chicken. Yes, it was. <laughs> um, I don't really know. I, I think I'm going to follow up the book. Mm -hmm. I haven't really formulated what that's going to look like yet. Mm -hmm. Just released this book in August, mm -hmm. so I need some time to just get over this. Mm -hmm. And really, I, I just wrote this book to honor her mm -hmm. and really get leave something for my nieces mm -hmm. and other young women in our family that didn't get to know her the way I did. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully someone else will get something from it, mm -hmm. other girls in the uh, community and in, in the world even. But it was really just to pay homage to her since she passed away in 2001. Well, that's good. I know yeah. she'll be happy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Miss Carla Ladd right here on the Shay and Cut Out G Show. And if you would like, make sure you go check her out on her website, CarlaLadd.com. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> Thanks. And cut! Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank y'all for coming back to the Shed Can I Vent G Show. We have the people in the audience. Y'all having a good time? All right, once again, we are filming right here at Jazzy Jacks at the Denver Pavilions, downtown Denver, Colorado. So my next guest we have has a great story. He has a new stage play DVD out called For the Sake of the Children. Y'all give it up, please, for Mr. William Pierce. Thank you very much. William, William, William. How you feel, man? I feel with my hands. Okay, then, you feel with your hands. All the way from uh, Minnesota, ain't you? Minneapolis, Minnesota. Yeah, this is summertime weather for you, ain't it? I got off the plane, I started sweating. He started sweating. <laughs> we, we was in the car, we was in the car. He looking around, he got his shirt off. I'm like, man, put your shirt on. <laughs> yeah, it was like 50 degrees here. He said, it's summertime for him. He's like, through the sunroof. <laughs> so that's it, man. Well, welcome to Denver, man. How, how you like Denver so far? Well, so far, I don't like it. Why, what? I love it. Oh, all right. <laughs> You know you weren't going to make it out of Jazzy Jacks. Yeah, I, 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 was, I have to say that because, you know, there's too many people here for me to say I don't like Denver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also want to say congratulations uh, on the show. Oh, man, yeah, Shea that's cool. can I vent? Can I vent? Yeah, vent, vent, vent no, uh, William, vent. vent yet, okay, yet, all right, don't do that. All right, you know I got to copyright it, so if you okay. vent, I'm going to get paid. No. <laughs> But no, we have a lot of stuff that's going on, man. I mean, when, when, when I talked, when I first met you, my, um, my cousin Vince, when I was in Minnesota, I came out and opened up for one of your plays. And then um, the play was great. And I, I was intrigued about how, how you start writing and things of that nature. Now, your story is kind of different than a lot of what these stage play writers out there are doing. I mean, can, can you share with us, if you don't mind, your story? Uh, I started writing plays in 1998. Um, I was just involved with uh, black history programs and I wanted to do something different. Mm -hmm. And I started writing slave plays. So, mm -hmm. And uh, I continued to write and uh, my story, actually I was writing, I was incarcerated. In what? Incarcerated. That's in prison. <laughs> Everybody understand what they <laughs> That's jail or no? <laughs> J-A. Okay, so, so you was incarcerated, okay. Yes. 
uh, actually, one thing I like to tell people, be careful who you hang around. Right. One, one moment of pleasure can cause you a lifetime of misery. Uh, I had friends that I shouldn't have been hanging around. I was involved with the music at the time. I was a, right. um, I was a manager of a few groups. And went and took a trip to Chicago right. with friends. And of course, I was involved in some activity at the time that I'm not proud of. But uh, we got stopped by the highway patrol. And I, uh, the, the car was searched. And my friend, so to speak, right. testified against me. Oh. Uh, friends. Friends. Frenemies. You know, friend. Frenemies. Right. So um, I received a 20-year prison sentence mm. and served 14 years and seven months of that prison sentence. Mm. But I, I, I made a promise to God if I got out, and I got out two years earlier, mm. that I would continue to do uh, the things that I was doing there. And I started, again, I started writing in 1998, and the uh, character, Grandpa, the character I played, uh, it was born in Memphis, Tennessee, right. in 2001. Got yeah. it? So um, I started writing and continued to write because I didn't want that time to do me, I want to do the time. Oh, say that again. Uh, I like that. I didn't say want that. that time to do me, I want to do the time. And I received two degrees, uh, a bachelor in Christian counseling and also associate in business. So I, I do what I do because I want people to understand that no matter your condition, no matter your situation, you can make it. Right. And we have a tendency to uh, fall back on, I can't do this because of this or this or where I grew up or where I come from. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you can do mm -hmm. if you just do it. Right. You know, so um, when I got out, I started my company, Second Chance Productions, because I was given a second chance. Right. And I said, if I get out of here, God, if you get me out, mm -hmm. then I will do what you asked me to do. Mm -hmm. The talent that you showed me that I have in right. this situation, because every bad situation is not really bad. Right. It's just bad to us at that time. Right. But in that situation, we find out who we really are. Yes. And you find out who your friends are. Right. So I started writing when I got out in 2008. My first uh, stage play, yeah, My I was gonna Man say, or now, My now Child. What was, your, what was your first stage play? Tell my me Man that. or My Child. My Man or My Child. I want uh, Make them repeat what you just said. My Man. Help me out. My, my Man or My Child. Mm, and something, I'm about to fall out. Something that's very prevalent in our society where a lot of single women, mm -hmm. whether they try to or not, inadvertently or whatever the case may be, they are putting somebody else mm -hmm. or something else before their children. Right. And so that's what I want to portray. I wanted something uh, that really would catch people's attention. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I started with, A Man and My Child. So it's a very good stage play. Of course, it's, it's my start. Right. That's, and, now, uh, now, now, when I saw it, I mean, in Minnesota, you did something that I've never seen. Um, like. When you brought everybody out, you incorporated like all of the local, you know what I'm saying? You brought all of the local, y'all don't understand, he had, he touched every part of that state and had them involved with the play. And that's something that, that, that is given back. Now, was that hard to get people? Because a lot of times when, when you see people try to do things on their own, was it hard for them, it, it was hard for you to get people to come along even though the pay is not you know what I mean? Like, you know, you know what it is. I ain't working first. for you. How much I get paid? How much I get paid? I said it right. How much I get paid? You know, but that's what it is. Now, was that hard for you? Not necessarily, because remember what I went through. Right. And I felt that if I could make it through that, mm -hmm. I can make it through anything. There it is. Determination. I was determined to make it regardless. And right. when people tell me I couldn't, mm -hmm. it made me work harder. Mm -hmm. So I just impressed upon people, if you believe in me. Right. If you work with me, mm -hmm. we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I did that, and I still in people. I, I went out to find people who, that I felt believed in me. Right. Because if people don't believe in your dream or right. your idea, you won't make it. And I know. And I know. So let's get into this now. Let's talk about it. Y'all give it up for that. Y'all, that's good. Let's talk about this stage play right here. Tell, tell me and, and the community about this for the sake of the children. This is your play right here. That's your baby. It's Tell me baby. about that. Tell me about that. For the sake of the children. Tell for the sake of the children. Again, we, we want to impress upon people that the children. Right. We cry about the children. We say they're not doing this. That, but what are you doing? Mm -hmm. What are you doing to help the children? We have to do something. We have to take back the community. We have to take back our neighborhoods. We have right. to take back our homes. Right. So for the sake of the children, you need to do something for the sake of them. If right. you don't want to do it for yourself, okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But for the sake of your children. Uh, the idea came about, you know, I have some family members that are 
involved in some things for as not involved in illegal activity, but mm -hmm. they're going through some things. Right. So I want to come up with this idea that this drug mother, mm -hmm. drug addicted mother, mm -hmm. uh, which is my daughter in the play, right. comes over and just drops the children off mm -hmm. and leaves. You Where do you get that from? Nobody ever do that. Nobody ever just They do it all the time. <laughs> Mama, can you watch my kids? No, I, I mean, don't ask me. Yeah. Daddy, can you watch? No, I can't watch your kid. Why you can't watch them? Where the yeah. daddy at? Right, right. Why he ain't watching them? So, yeah. uh, of course, she has three children mm -hmm. by three different men. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, she cares more about her addiction, addiction right. than she does her children. Right. So um, that, that idea came from that. And so we wanted to portray, of course, you in the play. Yes, Cedric. I'm, yes, give I'm it up in the play. Yes, I'm in the play. I'm Cedric in the play. Gary's in the play. He plays my friend, Emmett. Can you give me a little bit of Emmett? Uh, I, play, I play Emmett, and I'm a, um, I'm a stuttering. I talk like this through the, uh, through the uh, uh, whole play. And I'm, I'm going to tell you about that. I was such a character. I went to the airport the next day. <laughs> They're like, say, what's your name? My man, my man, my, my name, the name is. <laughs> but tell so me who else is in, is in this play. We have a little G from Lil Silk. Little G from Silk. He's in the play. Uh, mm -hmm. Isaac Keys is also Keys. here. He uh, was on a Donald Trump ultimate yeah. merger. And also, right. he's an ex Viking, yes. you know, sort of Viking that mm -hmm. is, Arizona uh, Carter. Right. And uh, my, my, the lady that plays my wife, Edith Jasper, right. uh, she plays Hattie B. Right. Now, you always have that mother. Mm -hmm. and motherly figure. And that's what I want to do. I want to get back to those grandparents, mm -hmm. the, 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 the concrete mm -hmm. of the family. So, about, you talking about them grandparents, the, the grandmama that's on the porch. Yeah, mama and With a fly them, yes. just on the porch, killing yeah. flies. And, and would take her shoe and throw it at you. And, and hit you and with hit the you. same fly swatter that got the dead fly on. Shut up! Dip in the snuff and, and you know what I'm saying, you get stung by a bee to take the snuff and, and put, you know. <laughs> Okay, oh, continue. Continue on, continue so, on. So uh, Hattie B is, is the, uh, you know, she the matriarch of the family. She's the one who the love it. Right. I'm the one that, look, if you had them, you raise them. Right. So she's the one that wanted to bring the kids over because the state want to take the children from her because right. she's not going to court. Right. So now Hattie B wanted to bring the kids in to the mm -hmm. house. Mm -hmm. And we already got enough problems. Yeah. We don't need no more problems. Right. And these kids, they, you know, they. they that, look, look, okay, that's enough, that's okay. enough. See, don't give, them, don't give them too much. Yeah, Grandpa. Don't give them too much. Now, for the sake of the children, if somebody wants to go get this DVD, um, you, you do have them here tonight, so people can tonight. so y'all can purchase this DVD here tonight. And then also, what, what is your website? It's Second Chance Productions, all mm -hmm. spelled out, and that's production with an S at the end, not at the beginning. It's production, I spell with no S. Uh-huh. Okay. Anyway. So it's at the end. At the end. Okay. Yes. Right. Dot B-I-Z. B-I-Z. Yes. And they can uh, purchase all three. We have a soundtrack as well. Um, for $25. That's a hookup. That's, that's the hookup, not hook a hookup, up. the hookup. Okay. And, uh, so they can go there and all they can call 612-840-3321. Now you know you don't, okay, say that again. People can't. 612-840. It's not O, zero. Mm -hmm. 3321. Quit, yeah, is that on the plate? Oh, yeah, yeah. People always we say do the do O, o don't we? No. A for O, that ain't O. O? I was, o I was alphabet. alphabet. <laughs> What's your number? 303. 30. Three so I'm gonna hit in the O and what? <laughs> it ain't dialing. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, y'all give it up for Mr. William Pierce right here. He's gonna be doing so much stuff. Make sure you go to secondchanceproductions.biz. We gonna do, we'll be right back with this. <laughs> oh. Oh. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Shed Can I Vent G Show. Um, I have um, a dear friend of mine, this girl, and I'm going to say it. I know we're supposed to be professional, but how many of you get down? This is my girl right here. Y'all see her all over. Y'all give it up for Miss Gloria Neal. <laughs> Miss, Miss Gloria Neal. How you feel, baby? Good. I'm feeling good. It's been a good day. Yes, I see. She just came on here and just put the pill over there. She comfortable. Let me get comfortable well, with that's you. That's what you're supposed to do, right? Y yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. Cool. Now, we see you doing so much stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? The first thing I want to know is, mm -mm. as we, you know, how, like we uh -oh. say, what makes glow glow? Ooh. You know what? I mean, on a, on a good day, because, you know, you don't want to scare the white people. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
What makes me me is, uh, I think, just being real. You know, I said this to my boss one time. I right. said, people don't want perfect. People want real. Mm -hmm. Nobody's perfect. So right. why get on and try and pretend and, you know, I didn't go to what they call anchor school and not mm -hmm. interested in not knocking people who are anchors. That's their thing. But I right. think people want to look at TV and they want to see themselves. They want to see real. Right. You know, how you would talk to a girlfriend or a guy friend in a conversation. Right. So I think that's, that's what makes me me. I am at my best. Mm -hmm. When I'm just being me. Right. And, 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 and when people get me, you right. know, because you do worry about that. Sometimes you're on TV and you think, okay, did they understand that outside mm. of five points? Yeah. <laughs> My bello. <laughs> you know, that's important. I mean, I yeah. realize there's a lot of y'all in here, but there ain't a lot of us in the state. Yeah. So you do want to be able to cross promote. And certainly you want everybody to understand the message because that's really what it's all about. Right. Now, see, you're, you're natural when it comes to just, just doing what you do mm. and the humor just, where do, you, where, where, where do you get your talent from? Where do you search, you know what I mean? Where, how do you get that? Well, you know what, you, you, you can't pick your parents. So. Right. <laughs> so I think, you know, when people say, you know, the talent is God given and mm. uh, it, certainly it is that, but I think in a lot of ways, you know, mm. parents have to nurture, you know, nurture that. And I, I wasn't really um, a class clown, but I was right. always that person who had a unique way to say things, especially when no one else wanted to say it. Right. And so, you know, just being able to speak your mind in a way that didn't necessarily leave people bleeding. Right. Right. So, <laughs> you know, although bleeding is not bad too, but that's yeah. a good tool to have. <laughs> but I think, um, you know, to say where I got my talent from, it's just mm. something that everybody has right. a gift and mm -hmm. it was just nurtured and mm -hmm. I just kept kept going. That's kept good. And now, but I don't get to do stand up like you because, you know, you got to get up and go to work and be in front of the camera and you can't be looking crazy. Right. But see, I was so, going to touch on that, though. See, mm -hmm. it's funny you say that. But 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 you have done stand up. Mm -hmm. Tell me. Tell me about that. When did when did you was like, you know what? I'm going to do stand up. You know, <laughs> no, what I mean? it didn't. I didn't give birth to it. You didn't give birth. Um, to it. Tell no. me about it. What happened, I mean, it's, it's, it's one thing to be with friends and you make people laugh. Mm -hmm. It's something else to get up on stage and have the intention of making people laugh, mm -hmm. right? Right. So it takes on a whole different persona. And so when I got up there at, it was Comedy Works, the first time I was like, oh my God, what mm -hmm. am I doing? Mm -hmm. That's the longest three minutes of your life. And mm -hmm. it just... It just materialized. I mean, right. people started laughing, and I just went with it. Mm -hmm. And, you just, and so, you just doing three the... minutes became six minutes, and uh -huh. six minutes became twelve. And you know, that's how it. That's how it happens. Now, you know, you get a lot of female comics or Ooh. whatever. They get up there. They like to male bash. Now, right. how do you feel about men? You know what? I love men, um, and I, I, I'm not. Um, I'm not a male bashing comic. Now, I don't run from a joke, but I'm not a vulgar mm -hmm. comic. And, and this perhaps could be the old fashioned in me, if y'all can believe that. Mm -hmm. Y'all do believe that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't necessarily, um, you know, even though we talk about it being a balanced world and we talk about it being fair, right. um, it is true. It's different for a man. A man can be filthy. Mm -hmm on stage, but that is not the case. A woman can come in and be filthy and it changes the whole room. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it. Mm -hmm. And so I learned from that. And mm -hmm. I'm glad that that's not my shtick. I think that you can get your point across. You can be very funny and you don't have to be vulgar. Yes. So I think real life is funny. I think mm -hmm. everything. At some point, I am going to be talking about Joe butt. You always do. <laughs> because I think it is funny, but I don't necessarily my think My butt that, is funny. Well, your whole body, but your butt especially is like an onion. Ah, oh, see. <laughs> Next question, please. No, no, Big Daddy. You, you. No, you the one saying y'all make us feel uncomfortable. And right now, <laughs> I, do, do we got enough time to cut to a commercial? <laughs> Is it time? No, it's not time yet. <laughs> now, one thing I do, I, su I do see you on, on television. You're doing a lot of things. Uh -huh. And so what is... What is it like when you was like when you was a child? Or mm. you, what did you want to do? Did, did, did you see yourself doing stuff like this? Mm -mm. What, 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 what was it that you wanted to mm -mm. do? You know what? One of my favorite shows on TV was Carol Burnett. How many people here watch Carol Burnett show? Oh, yeah. I loved Carol Burnett. Look, uh -huh. how many people here know who Carol Burnett is? OK, good, because some of y'all like, mm-mm. Carol Burnett, Flip Wilson, uh -huh. and, and Flip Wilson, and when my mother wasn't, you know, 
Fred Sanford because yeah. he was filthy. Yeah, he was. You know, and you knew, even though I wasn't good on the cursing, you knew that you didn't want to ask mama, what's a bastard? Yeah. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> hit the button. <laughs> you knew, you right. knew. And, but you knew, I also knew, I was like, whatever that is, that's got them rolling in the mm -hmm. aisles because they would send all the kids outside. That's when I knew they were going to bring out those records. Mm -hmm. So all of that stuff, um, I think, forms you and makes you and... Um, I loved, absolutely loved Carol Burnett. I would mm -hmm. watch that show. And then from Carol Burnett, it was Johnny Carson. Mm -hmm. You know, so I got a chance to stay up late when I started getting older. Right. You know, like 14, 15, and watch The Tonight Show with my mother. Right. And so it just developed from there. And you just, you, I don't know about you, but you see the comedic timing. You don't right. know what a lot of it's called. Mm -hmm. But what you begin to realize as you continue to grow is mm -hmm. comedy isn't everything. Mm-hmm. It's all over work. Right. You know, it is in everything. So people say, you know, where did that come from? Or how did you do mm -hmm. that? It just, it's the spur of the moment. Sometimes right. those are the best things that just kind of materialize. And so a lot of times what I do on the news, my, it doesn't kind of work into that. Right. But if it is, or if it does, I will definitely bring it. I'm not afraid right. to. Now, now, I'm, now, now, wouldn't y'all agree? Wouldn't y'all love to see... Miss Gloria Neal do 45 minutes of stand up, uh, just nothing but her on the stage, no camera, no producers, just her doing her, you know what I mean, talking about it all. And we can set that up. Handle it? Yeah. Y'all we'll, do it. Y'all would support me? Yes, we will. Matter of fact, I will, I will open up for you. I will open up for you. I will be your feature, and then because I, I would love to see that. Really? Yes, I would. Yes, I would. Yes, okay, I was. well, I have seen you. Right. And you ain't open it up for me, cause <laughs> you know the feature. No, no. Let me be clear. Let me be clear, cause the feature act is not supposed to be as good as this, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that's all I'm saying. Well, I, well much respect. I love all you. All right, because you. You, you are wonderful. I have seen you many times. Very, very funny. Absolutely love what well, you do. Well, thank you so much. Absolutely thank love you so it. Much. That means a lot coming. From love what you do. Love what you do. So. There's so much stuff that um, you got on your plate. I know there's a lot of stuff on your plate. Yeah. So besides the television, mm -hmm. what, what is it that you, you see yourself doing in the future? Um, you know what? I think to be in the position that we are both in, and we laugh and we joke, um, but there are many people who have mm -hmm. gone before us right. so that we are up here. Right. So that people feel endeared. When people, when people come up to me or even to you and they mm. express their love and their gratitude and their mm. support. Right. Um, and I say this to many people, I really appreciate it because they don't have to do that. Right. They, they don't have to watch. Mm -hmm. They could, you know, because now sometimes y'all will call, Gloria, what was that bird's nest you had around your neck? They, <laughs> you know, they'll criticize the necklace or whatever right. it is. But then at the end of the evening, I say, but you watched, didn't you? You watched. Yes, yes. And so um, I just really take pride mm -hmm. in what I do. I was recently in Chicago. Right. And as you know, Oprah's show is going away. Mm-hmm. And they interviewed um, about 500 people who were there. Now, since it's a done deal, Stephen A. Smith was there. Mm -hmm. Y'all know him from ESPN yeah. and Tony Harris and a whole different people from uh, Law and Order. Different people were there. Mm -hmm. And they narrowed it down to like uh, 14 people because you get a call back if they right. want you. And I flew back up there and um, was one of the three women mm -hmm. for the co-host of that particular Wait a minute, you was what? One of three. She was one of the three. women and the producers were very, very um, supportive and, you know, if you've ever dealt with producers in very big markets, because WLS, the biggest ABC station really in the nation, they, right. I mean, anytime Oprah's leaving that time slot and she's got seven million viewers right there. Mm -hmm. So whatever show they put in there, they know mm -hmm. that that show needs to be the show. It's going to be crucial. But out of 500, I narrowed it down to three women. I did not get the gig because they needed somebody from Chicago, but at least I know I'm on the right track. So Denver, I'm trying to represent. Yeah. So, so outside of TV, I think the biggest thing that we can do, regardless of you think, okay, well, Glow, what do you want to do? Well, there's no question I do want my own show. I believe that right. there is something in me that can help, can benefit, and can be taught. Right. Just like I expect to teach and influence, I too can be influenced and taught. Um, and I think there is a gift there that I'm very thankful to be able to have in my DNA. Mm -hmm. But I take every step thinking about, okay, you can't do X, Y, Z. You can't go, um, how shall I say, just off. Mm -hmm. 
you need to make sure that you represent in the way that you know as a child of God, yes. even crazy Gloria. Mm -hmm. Be crazy Gloria in the house mm -hmm. when you have a dinner party. Mm -hmm. I've been there. But when you... <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you have. But when you are outside, it's very important to be um, in a, a, a presentable, in a respectable form. And that's not hard for me because that's part of who I am as well. Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, y'all give it up for Miss Gloria Neal for being here. The beautiful, the lady. And we'll be right back. Thank you so much. Said, can I get you so? And I, I am so honored to have this nationally, this world legend on the show, Miss Cleo Parker. Y'all give it up for Miss Cleo. Love you, Miss Cleo. They love you back. Man, you are a true, first of all, just let me say, it's such an honor to be talking to you right here on the show. I mean, I, I've seen you do so much and a lot of things that you've been doing in the community with your dance, mm. and I had the honors of hosting one of your yes, shows, you and we're going to get into that in a yes, minute. But so, so how do you feel? How do you feel? Oh, I feel good. I'm alive. That's the best part. Yes. I love it. And you yeah, look good. Yeah. Don't you thank look good? You, thank you. I feel good. Shaw, I've got a legs crossed. <laughs> working it. So, so... Now we're gonna get. Let's let's start from the beginning, uh -oh. okay? From the beginning, when, when when you started to dance, how did you know that you wanted to dance? Well, I don't know. I I don't know that I I knew I wanted to dance. I just never stopped moving. Okay. I just always moved. It mm -hmm. was you know I was um, anywhere I was. The minute I was could do anything, I was mm -hmm. moving. I danced everywhere I went. Anything I was doing, I was moving. You was just moving. Yeah. So, so others would say to my parents, oh, oh she's going to be a dancer. She's going to be a dancer. I didn't know what that was. Mm -hmm. I just know I love music. I was right. born around music. You right. know, in Five Points. Yes. I really was born yes. right in the Brasonia, which blows my mind as I go down the street and I go, that was my apartment up there. That yes. Was, you know, so I guess I was destined to dance you, because you I was around was. music that was so wonderful. Yes. So I think that's that was my first inspiration. You know, right. my father was for, first of all my teacher. You yes. know, because he loved it. He, every day he said, "Come on, baby, we had to get out. We had jitterbug or yeah. whatever." That you know how old I am now. Jitterbug. Jitterbug. <laughs> jitterbug. Jitterbug. And, look, you and, your, and your dad still be moving. I remember oh, yeah. after, after yeah, your yeah. function, your dad oh, came yeah. out there and cut a step. That is serious. He's yes, serious. he was. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Now, when you do, you remember. When, when, when you said, you know what, I want to pursue this as a career. Mm, I don't know. Um, you know, I started teaching really young. Mm -hmm. Started teaching about 15. Okay. Um, but I, you know, I, I think something tragic happened that then turned my life around. I lived in Denver all the way up till about 10, and then I lived in Dallas. Okay. That time I almost died. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, the doctors said I would never walk. I was mm -hmm. bedridden. Right. And um, I think even at that time, I made this like transition. So I'm always in this other, other space. Right. Really like, y'all okay mm -hmm. over there? You know. But I think it's because I've made lots of physical transitions. Right. I had a heart attack. So at right. that time, right after that, mm -hmm. I then figured, well, if I'm going to die, mm -hmm. I might as well be dancing. Right. I don't really. Right. Don't really. I mean, uh, I think it was really mm -hmm. young that I made some kind of kind of deep connection right. with, with my body and my soul right, right then. Well, I'm you glad know. that you kept yeah, dancing yeah, because yeah. you did so, so I much. I decided I wanted to dance. Yes. If I could do anything else, that's what I wanted to do. Now, now when you was dancing, um, how was it in the industry? Well, I mean, because I know you know you had the Cotton Club, and, oh, yeah. and then, I'm not saying you were there, but, yeah, but you had yeah, that yeah, type yeah. of thing when we read about yeah. segregation Club, and stuff. That old no, I didn't say you. I didn't say you. I didn't say you. I didn't know you're 21. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But, but, but you know, like coming up, you know how like when you read yeah. about a lot of stuff in, in some right, people's right, ways, right, 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 right. like even today, you still have yeah, racism and yeah. stuff like oh, that. Absolutely. How did you, did, did you ever encounter anything like that? Like, like when you was dancing mm. and going from club to club? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, I mean, we always encountered it. I mean, there was, um, oh, you know, there, there are so many stories. That we mm -hmm. don't have that much time, mm -hmm. but, but I think, you know, there's, there's different parts of my life where I started dancing mm -hmm. and I, I wasn't a professional dancer, but I began to mm -hmm. realize that wherever I went to dance, mm -hmm. nobody looked like me. Right. And that was the main thing. Mm -hmm. It was like, I'm not supposed to be here because mm -hmm. if you don't see anybody who looks like you when you walk in, you go, 
Mm, mm -hmm. Maybe I shouldn't be here. Whether it's a man or a woman or old people, young people, or right. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So I think from then on, I began to say, well, I'm going to create it where some folks at least feel like me or look like me or right. whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think that that was it. I didn't say I wanted to be a professional dancer, although I would look at American Bandstand. Mm -hmm. And the only one that looked sort of like me was Annette Funicello. So I changed mm -hmm. my name from Cleo because nobody said, Cleo, are you Cleopatra? So I was so tired of being called Cleopatra until mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. Then I go to Egypt and I go, let me check out Cleopatra. Okay. Right. So, but, but I said, so call me Annette, because I'm going to be like an American bandstand. Mm -hmm. So it, it got so better. You change it got better so, so, so you just said, call me Annette. Annette. That's call your, me Annette. As they say, oh, club Annette. name. <laughs> that's my yeah. club name. That's what I did too. I said, call me L. That's an L DeBarge. You know, because that's what I wanted. <laughs> call me L, but you Annette. <laughs> that's right. Annette Funicello. That was the only way to sort of. You know, because there weren't any people of color on mm -hmm. American Bandstand at that time. Right. But anyway, so I began to create to s mm -hmm. opportunities, and um, and then I knew that I wanted to be in New York. So I would say by the time I was 19, right. when I went to New York, mm -hmm. I then said, this is where I went to, actually, I went to Arthur Mitchell's. Mm -hmm. And when I saw the company, did anybody see Arthur Mitchell's company yeah. here? Yeah, yeah. Dance Theater Harlem. It was so beautiful. Yeah. But I had some incredible memories about getting into Harlem right. and walking into that studio and seeing mm -hmm. all these young kids on the floor just being mesmerized by this great man. Right. Just that respect, that beauty, right. and that respect, that self-dignity is what right. just blew my mind. Yes. And so I said, Denver, I mean, you know, because that's when I started at the Model Cities Cultural Center. Right. At about, um, right after that at 21. So I never stopped for 40 years. See, and that's, that's one so thing that's that is good. Y'all got to give it up for that. Because that's a, that's a, that's a, yeah, but I did it with everyone. Yes. I mean, it, it wasn't it wasn't anything that I had planned. I know a lot of people plan their lives out. Right. I just feel mine. Mm -hmm. I feel it, and if it mm -hmm. feels good, I do it. If it doesn't feel good, I may not do it. Right. And yeah. then I say, wait, am I supposed to have a lesson here? You know. Yeah. But I think I've been very fortunate. I mean, we've taken the company around the world so yes. many times. And, yes. But I think some of the beauty of it is. Uh, I mean, being with great artists, because I re remember um, Donald McHale, you know, I mean, he would say, Bill Cosby's in town, let's go hang out with Bill Cosby. And I said, well, invite him to the party. Right. And we'd have color girls parties, and, mm -hmm. and Bill Cosby would come. And, right. I mean, just so we were around a lot of extraordinary people. Mm -hmm. You know, I worked with um, Gordon Parks, and yes. I got to work with him for 10 years. It took us 10 years to make a film, 10 right. years. And I loved every year of the 10 years. Yes. But I would say if people make a film, don't take 10 years. Right. Unless you're working with Gordon Parks. Now, <laughs> yeah. now if it's Gordon Parks, it take 10 years. But, yeah. but doing Catherine Dunham's work is probably my greatest joy. So, so let's talk about your, um, what you have here, the Cleo Parker yeah. dance. Now, let's talk, yeah. how did that now, yeah. now, how did that come about for you to, to do it right here? Because y'all yeah. travel yeah. everywhere. You you have great um, dancers who you have with yeah. you. Do you, I mean, is there, do, do they have to audition or, yeah. or what is it? Uh, tell oh, me yeah. about that. Well, when I started, I just started with high school kids. I started, um, at that point, I was on staff at CU mm -hmm. teaching black dance. And what was really mm -hmm. wild is it was the first black dance that CU had ever had. Right. So I have um, the, the professor who said, Cleo, I want you to do this program. This is something that CU needs. And, mm -hmm. and I didn't go to CU. They didn't accept me in the dance program. Hello. Yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. so I went up there and started teaching. You know, you can't go into the program, but I'm going to teach. So I started teaching the black dance. Mm -hmm. And I went to the first class, and they were all white people. Mm -hmm. I came back and I said, what is going on? I've never had a class where I think we're going to have black dance and no black people. I just, I said, what is wrong with this picture? I just, I didn't even know what that meant. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, this is what, we don't have any black people. That's why you're going to be teaching right. black dance. Yeah. I said, oh, so, so they want to create all that. They want to create they, their own soul train, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was fine. Exactly. Yes, I, she couldn't I do this because her hand like, is stuck in her hair. <laughs> Sorry, though, that's not appropriate. So the only way I could get black dancers was I recruited from the wrestling team. Okay. And the football team. So okay. that's where my black dancers came from, the men. Okay. So I wanted men to dance, but they right. didn't want to dance. They were worried about being in those tights, you know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes, I, yeah. Remember, I said I was going to dance. So I saw that first dude come out. I said, ooh, you need that, uh, that new boss. You can't. <laughs> Let me, let me they were so worried about being yeah. called gay. It was so weird. Yeah. And so I, it's I was cold like, in the room. Yeah, yeah. They, it's they, cold. They, they, was, they wouldn't even touch it. 
So to turn it around right. so men, but see, when I, I go around the world and when I was in Africa, all the men dance. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what the men do for, right. I mean, they, they compete. I right. mean, that's really something. So mm -hmm. to keep trying to tell the men it was all right, right. they could dance, it wouldn't be like, you know, they wouldn't be disowned. Right. But it took a long time to change yeah. culture, change the way people think. Right, now, mm -hmm. now, one thing that I want to touch on before we get out, I love the fact that your Denver Dancing with the Stars. If you Yay! haven't seen her Denver fabulous. Dancing with the Stars, we got some it here. is so we much fun. Here. Yes, we have people in the audience. Yeah. Denver Dancing with the Stars. It was like Dancing Scott with the Stars. Mitchell. Yeah, Scott Mitchell. Scott Mitchell. So it, you had all of those people. What made it so fun is that they took people, um, you know, you know, people, just workers and businessmen, um, elite of, of the community, to come out and and, and dance. And they would dance with somebody from the crew. It's now, fabulous. tell me now, tell me how it came out, because man, it is so. Mm. When I was there, I, it, it was it was a great mm. just experience to see everybody dancing. You know, it even they good. know, you know, they they they, they, they took <laughs> yeah, it back, that. and someone wore the tights though. It was but, you serious, know. serious. I, 13 wonderful community leaders yes. came in and supported the company all kinds of ways, financially, mm -hmm. which is really, we hate to talk about money, mm -hmm. but there's no way in the world that you can keep a company together in mm -hmm. Denver, Colorado, mm -hmm. unless you have people who are ready to give their, their all of their resources, right. not mm -hmm. just, you know, show up. Right. I don't have any money, but I'm here. Mm -hmm. That helps, that mm -hmm. helps, but it isn't totally. I mean, because right. I feel like what our community just did was, was um, an example for the rest of the country. Right. Really, I mean, what we did in Denver is an example for the rest of the company, right. for the country. Mm -hmm. And I realize that because I've been doing it all over the world, right. and I know how hard it is for many. I know how hard it is for Arthur Mitchell. Mm -hmm. And he's the only one in Harlem, he's the only one in the world who does what he does. Right. And I know how hard it is. Mm -hmm. I know how hard it was for Alvin Ailey. So to get people who will come out Mm -hmm. and support you financially, mm -hmm. spiritually, right. and show up and do the hard work, which yes. was the dance. Yes. They had to get in those classes. Yes. And I mean, they had to work. They had to give up their time and energy. Mm -hmm. And then almost go like, oh my God, am I going on stage in mm -hmm. front of all of these folks? Yes. And this is something I don't do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do it every day, so we're mm -hmm. used to finally getting right. out there. Mm -hmm. But I remember um, doing rain dance and having one of my wonderful supporters come out and the minute we were getting ready to go out on stage to do rain dance mm -hmm. and she had heart problems. I mean, mm -hmm. she and I both have heart problems. So mm -hmm. I would, she said, Cleo, I can't go out there. I said, sweetheart, it's too late. It's, the lights are going up, you got to go out, <laughs> uh -huh. it's time. This is not the time to say you're not going out. And I freaked out and I thought, oh my God, are we gonna have one of these 13 stars? Right. And they all went out. Yes. And they not only went out and did it, but they wore it they out. They it They wore up. it out. They wore it out. And, they and did it. people were like, you've been studying dance a long time. That was only like maybe five weeks mm -hmm. of maybe getting one class a week or something yes. like that. Not a long time. But I think that what we showed is anybody can do anything. When there's a will, there's a way. There's a will, when there's, there's a, a way. There's a will, there's a way. There's and if will, you believe in something so strong, which right. is they believed in the mission of the company and the organization. because. Right. Gwen Brewer and Moses and of course Valeria is here, yes. Hassan and Lubasan, and people, Ken Johnson, I mean when they believe in you and they brought you to me. Right. I remember I said, oh Lord, what are we going to do? And you made me feel so comfortable that I didn't read the script and I'm in trouble today. Yeah. They wrote that script for hours. And when I got with you, I just went, okay, y'all, we are here. And they said, it's not in the script Wait, like that wait, no, I got to tell the story. <laughs> so, so they wrote this script. The script, I mean, like, like good 23 pages oh, of the I mean, script. Like, serious. this is the script. This we're going to lead. They said, Shedrick, Miss Cleo, Shedrick, Miss <laughs> Cleo. I'm supposed to be, welcome, everybody. Miss Cleo said, hello, sugars. You know, <laughs> it said, I said, welcome, everybody. Hey, y'all, what y'all doing over there? You good? <laughs> yes, we are. I'm like, that's not the script. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, we were off. We were I was off. like, we I don't even off. got my script. check, Miss Cleo. They ain't going to pay me. <laughs> 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 But it was so much fun. Now, if we want to movie. see it anything about you, what is you, the website? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the website, cleoparkerdance.org. And I just think it's so beautiful that we have something like this. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I've been with the International Black Dance Conference. We just played L.A. last a couple of weeks ago. And I was with Debbie Allen mm -hmm. and many, many others. And Debbie and I are working on a project it's mm -hmm. called Southland. Okay. And it's that I've gotten this grant to do Catherine mm -hmm. Dunham's work mm -hmm. that has ever been done in the world. Mm -hmm. um, it's been done in Chile and Paris. Mm -hmm. And so it has never been done in our country because it was about the hanging, the lynchings in the South. Mm 
Right. And so therefore it's been banned in our country, mm -hmm. but I just w received a major grant from the National Endowment yes. to take it around the world. Yes. And so for dancers to know that the Catherine Dunham Dance Company was disbanded as soon as they did it yes. is a very risk-taking mm -hmm. uh, position for us to take. So we need everybody's love, you see? Yes. I mean, we really need that love and yes. support. Yes, so y'all make sure. We need it, we need it. Y'all give Miss Cleo we all the it. love. Miss Cleo, yeah. thank you so honey, much for this. You, Ladies and gentlemen, y'all right. gotta give it up for the legend yeah. herself, yeah. Miss yeah. Cleo Parker Robinson. We are back with my dude right here. I guess, I guess it's time for the sexy part of the show, you know. So y'all go ahead and light y'all incense, kush, guava juice, candle, bath and body works, send me a check. So you know, we gonna be, all right, we got my man right here, ladies, Mr. Isaac Keys right here. How you feel, hey, Vico? I'm good, bro, I'm good. You good? Thanks for, thanks for having me. All right, man, all right, so how you been, man? How you been? Been good, man, bless me. Holly flavored. Holly flavored. I feel flavored. you. All mm. right. I like feel Kool you. Kool Aid. Like Kool Aid. Mm. Yeah. Now, man, my first uh, uh, opportunity of working with you is when we did the play together. Right. Um, and when I saw you, it was so cool. We was just, you know, we saw each other and we just clicked right off the bat. It right. was just so much fun. And then when I was trying to find out your history, you know what I mean? Remember, I was asking you the question. I was like, so, so what is it that that that, that you did? Because you know, I thought you was a stripper. Uh huh. But right. you know. Right. You were just being nosy. That's what you. That's what I was being, being nosy. 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 <laughs> so right. I asked him. So then, tell him about like you used to play in in in, uh, in the NFL. I did. Tell me about that journey. I know no, that's a that's a journey. Definitely mm -hmm. a journey. Um, yeah, I played in the NFL. I went to Morehouse College mm -hmm. uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, and then uh, I got picked up as a free agent with the Minnesota Vikings. Mm -hmm. uh, not conventionally, like it wasn't conventionally style. Like I didn't get drafted. I picked up mm -hmm. as a free agent. Morehouse is known as an academic college. Right. You know, I came out of there. It was a struggle, but I made it. And I was just. Busting my butt, the, pretty much to say the whole time, and right. just kind of grinding for six years. So I was mm -hmm. blessed to be able to do that. Okay. Yeah. So, so you did that. So then after that, now you was you was doing the thing. You wanted to get into acting, and mm -hmm. then you you was a part of a, a famous reality show. Tell me about that. Yeah. Well, before you that, when you talked about the play, mm -hmm. you seen me. I was nervous, man. I didn't know what I was doing. That was my first stage play. I didn't know what to expect. He didn't see the part where I was in the bathroom talking to myself, trying yeah. to hype myself up in the mirror and stuff like that. Then I go out there. That's Wait, why I'm trying what? to be cool. I did see it, y'all. Let's look at the clip. I let, 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 wait a <laughs> you be like, wait a minute. I let, Look at the clip. <laughs> no. Right. I, 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 so, right. I'm yeah. you got me there. I, <laughs> no, but you was looking. Go ahead and finish. No, up. so um, I had an opportunity um, to do a reality show. They approached me. They said, Donald J. Trump is doing a reality show. Mm -hmm. I said, man, I'm not trying to do no reality show. You know, I was like, whatever. But they was like, it's Donald J. Trump is mm -hmm. doing a reality show. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it's going to be on NBC, mm -hmm. ABC, or something mm -hmm. of that nature. I said, you know, people talk to me about it, and I said, you know what, let's go for it. Life's about experiences. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, it'll just be another experience. They said it's a Bachelorette show. Mm -hmm. But see, they were so discreet. They had this big old pack, like you're talking about going to jail, they background check, they talking about they want to make sure you're not crazy, anything mm -hmm. like that. And um, a whole big audition process. Right. But the thing about it, they didn't tell you who the Bachelorette was going to be. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Now, okay, let's get into that. <laughs> so when they open up uh, curtain number two, <laughs> what did, now, now what did you think? Like when they opened it up, you ah! <laughs> what did you think? I kept it cool, unless you got a clip of that too. <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, 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 no, I kept it cool. You know, I was, right. um, it was 11 other guys. It was a real diverse group, and mm -hmm. I think they did great with the casting of it. Mm -hmm. um, but when she walked in, you know, I was like, hey, all right, we can. Yeah. Let's work it. We can work it. We, right. know, we know what we're doing. It's about experience. I mean, right. um, people ask, like, were you really into her? Were you, you know, how, how'd you feel about her? I was right. like, you know what? She's a, she's a sweetheart, honestly. Mm -hmm. She has, you know, she's created this perception of herself. Right. But, you know, she plays spades and talk a little trash and, yeah. and eat barbecue and she stuff real. like that. Yeah, she real. Right. Down to earth and everything. Yeah. So I had a good time. I mean, right. we had to sit there and, you know, dealing with all them guys and stuff like that and right. competing for one woman. That's right. an experience no man wants to go through. Now, 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 remember, we talked about this. Now, um, yeah. that, like, when, I, when, you, when you was telling me about that, I told you about an experience. Now, a lot of y'all don't know, but I had an experience that they wanted me to be on the first taping of, they, they was going to call it the Flavorette. Um, mm. And it, it was like back in 2000, yeah, they was going to call it Flavorette. Okay. But they changed it to I Love New York. 
Wow. And they wanted me to be on. I was like, man, I, I actually contemplated on doing it. But then I was like, I, you know what I'm saying, at, at, that, at that particular time mm -hmm. that I felt like, well, I don't know what it was going to do because we didn't know nothing about reality right. shows. All we knew was, yeah, boy, you know what I'm right. saying? I was like, wait a minute now, you know right. what I'm saying? Right. I right. can't be, you know, no disrespect to that, but it's like I was trying to go on a different level. So, so doing that, do you regret your decision? How do you feel about it? No, I, I don't have any regrets for doing the show. I right. mean, honestly, you wouldn't invite me on this show if I didn't do it. Praise right. God. <laughs> <Look enough. laughs> right, but no, I have no regrets for doing it because, like I said, it's an experience. Um, mm -hmm. I am single, so at that time, it was kind of like, hey. Say, you know, say it again, say it again. I am single, I'm a Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> I like long walks long in the park. Long walks in the park. Right, look, no kids. No look, kids. Look, look. That's Don't you they, hate that when you be like, no kids? What's wrong with that's you? That's not, yeah, they like, how old are you? You ain't got no kids? Yeah, yeah. now I'm in that part of the, uh, and then the like, question, yeah. none that you know of. Uh, no, right. <laughs> Exactly. But to get back to it, I don't have any regrets. Um, mm -hmm. It gave me an opportunity to really kind of make some good friends, kind of, you know, let myself be kind of seen. I played football for six years. I was right. hiding behind a helmet, right. running down a kickoff team. Now it allowed right. me to be able to kind of set a platform up where people right. can kind of see who I am as I make this transition to entertainment. Right. And the support that I've been given by so right. many people like Isaac, man, you was real on that show. Right. You really were. And it was me. Right. That was the thing about it. They didn't depict me as being some other kind of character that I have mm -hmm. to withstand for the rest of my career. Right. What you saw on TV was me. Right. And I'm proud of that. My right. parents can be proud of it. Right. And I know I'm not on, yeah, I had to show too much to do so. Y'all give it up for that. And that's the one reason why I asked that question. See, I asked that question because you didn't want that negative stigma right. to be out there like, well, if you get on a reality show, that's your seven minutes or exactly. whatever. Because you're doing other things, positive things. Tell right. me about the McDonald's uh, project you have going on. Uh, well, what, right now, what McDonald's is doing, um, you know, McDonald's is, they always pride themselves of being deeply rooted in the community. So uh, right now, um, they're doing, I'm their honorary McCafe man with McDonald's. Mm -hmm. So we're going around and different, doing different initiatives. We've done the Atlanta Football Classic. I just flew in actually from CIAA mm -hmm. in Charlotte, mm -hmm. uh, where we ha held the host at the convention center for three days. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was huge. I'm talking about that's a big, big turnout. But um, what we're doing is, is we're launching an initiative where you can submit um, if you have a positive black man in your community that you feel like is doing a lot of things with uplift, working with kids and mentorship, you can submit them to 365black.com. 365black.com, black .com. exactly. Black .com. And uh, okay. we will pick a winner. We'll pick about five winners and we'll fly them down. All accommodations paid for by McDonald's. Yes. Uh, to get 2011. A big rib. Right. You get, get a big rib. On, on the plane. Yeah. On the plane. <laughs> Like, you know they ain't giving nothing on the plane flight, no more. You know? Right, right. right. Yeah, nothing on the plane no more. Uh -uh. You just be thirsty. You just might well go to sleep. It's like having but, communion, uh, you know. Uh, right. Reading a little crackers and a little communion. Okay, I'm That's sorry. Right. But they will fly you down to uh, Essence Festival. Essence right. Festival. Mm -hmm. I'm still jet yeah. lag. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. In um, July. Okay. So, yeah. And so it's going to be a good thing. So now I have to ask the question mm -hmm. that a lot of people was asking me when they found out that, you know, we was cool. What type of woman are you looking for? Mm. What turned you on? What type of woman turned you on? What, mm. what if Isaac Keys, if Isaac, how you like, you like, that's Isaac. Isaac. Like, right, Isaac. Yeah, Isaac. I didn't like my middle name. My middle name, Lamont. I thought Lam Lamont sound like a baby daddy name, don't it? Yeah, it does. Who's your baby daddy, Lamont? That don't sound, oh, yeah. but yeah. Isaac is cool. So, so tell me mm. about Isaac. What, what type of woman is for Isaac Keys? Mm. Um, Did you say, mm? Yeah, I had to think about it. That's that, that's that thought, mm. mm. All right. Um, the type of woman that's turned on by herself, first of all. And when I say that, I mean she's very self-confident right. and secure within herself. Mm -hmm. And the things that she may be lacking in security, then, you know, she needs to share those with me. So, therefore, I can make her feel secure about those things. Um, now, after we pass all that, yeah, we, uh, <laughs> I like you to be able to dance. Like, she got to be able to dance. <laughs> Give me one. She gotta play spade. They play do it with no hands. Tom. She gotta be able to go drop it down. You say do it with no up. hands. Yeah, yeah. She got to. We get past all Welcome that. Welcome, McDonald's sponsor. Do it with no hands. Just don't play the song. Don't play. <laughs> Mick, do it with no hands. No. <laughs> Uh -huh. So, man, I really appreciate all this stuff that we're going. Is there a website that people can get in contact with you or anything like that? How can, like, like I know we're on Facebook, you're on mm -hmm. Twitter. Right. Talk about all that stuff. Well, I'm on Facebook, Isaac Keys. Um, Twitter, Isaac Keys, keep it simple. Uh, my website, I'm building that right now. Mm -hmm. And then my, now my website, man, disappearing on me. But yeah. that's going to be IsaacKeys.com as yeah. well. So, uh -huh. you know, you pay somebody some money. They, you, they gone. Yeah, they disappear on you, <laughs> I tell gone. you. <laughs> but I'm up there. You go to IsaacKeys.com, you'll see my picture. It's, not, it's just not the way I want it. But, yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's some content. 
appreciate it's that. It's something that they can Check put as they, 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 they screen yeah. saver. You know, you, you can see something, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a screen, screen, screen saver picture. picture. Yeah, Isaac Keys. Everything's Isaac Keys. You know, All right. <laughs> well, man, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, y'all give it up for Isaac Keys for being Thank here you. today. We're going to come back. We're going to do some lot of stuff. We have a lot of music that we're going to give it on. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Isaac Keys. Thank you. Thank you very much. My man. Thank you, bro. <laughs>
of Dot Zero. <laughs> and we'll be back right after this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Shed Can I Vent G Show. This next artist I have coming up, I had the honors of working with him in Atlanta, Georgia. We did a lot of stuff together. We even toured together. So y'all give it up right now for Mr. Ryan Kilgore. Mr. Kilgore, how you doing, man? Good, man. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. Now, you've been doing a lot of projects now. Now, you know, I, I know you don't like saying it, but I'm going to go ahead and toot your horn. Ms., um, Ryan Kilgore, you've been on such projects as the um, Tyler Perry plays. You know what I mean? Uh, which one was it? Uh, uh, the Mayor's Counselor. He played in the Tyler Perry play, The Mayor's Counselor. So all the music that you heard or whatever, he was a part of that. And you also, right now, touring with the great Stevie Wonder. How, how's that feel? Oh, that's a, it's a blessing, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's a lot of stuff that, that you have going on in your life and, and everything. Tell me about that. Uh, how y'all doing? Oh, okay. Y'all give it up to Shed, man. This is a beautiful, beautiful situation. Um, what I'm doing now, uh, I just started an organization called Changing the Face of Jazz. And basically what we're doing is we're going into high schools, promoting musicianship, uh, promoting, taking the jazz from an old face to a young face. You know, no offense or anything to anybody that's older that loves jazz, but jazz is suffering right now. It's dying, and uh, we have to revive it. You know, so basically, I'm getting ready to uh, put a mixtape out called "Changing the Face of Jazz, Volume One," where I'm basically playing all their music. You know, uh, Chris Brown, Usher, um, uh, Carrie Hilson, and it, but it's a jazz version of it. So when I go into the schools, I have something to give them. It's going to be totally free for them. You know, and uh, we basically just trying to create another atmosphere. And the reason why I'm doing it is because they're trying to take music out of schools. And it's really important that we, as artists, come back and say, hey, man, I'm a product of, you know, being in marching band. I'm a product of having put my plume on, standing in the tunnel, you know, doing all that kind of stuff, you know, that they're, they're missing out on. And, um, you know, I've been watching, you know, the, the, some of the counties and stuff, even in Atlanta, how they're cutting budgets, going from 650000 one year to two years later, spending 25000 And it's 100,000 kids in the music department alone. So that's like 20, 25 cents per child. You know, that's not even a box of reeds or, or a mouthpiece or a, a ligature or something, you know? And uh, just the experience of, of, of knowing where something like that, it saved my life. And, you know, there's a lot of kids out there, if they don't have band, if they don't have the arts, what are they gonna be doing? You know what I mean? But yet, when you get in your car, you wanna turn on the radio. When somebody get married, you wanna have music coming. You know, uh, uh, when you wanna make love, you wanna have a CD playing, you know, all that kind of stuff. So. Um, you know, you're just trying to create a different atmosphere for the young kids to understand, you know, that jazz doesn't have to be, you know, jazz don't. Can I ask you a question? This is, <laughs> he's telling everything. This is my boy, right? See, that's how you can tell when you're free and they be like, move over. This is my show now. Hey, how you doing? I'm Ryan Kilgore. Welcome to the conversation of love. <laughs> So we we done so much stuff together, like the vent session and, and, and everything that, that we have done. And, and I'm really excited about that mixtape. But um, this conversation with love, this CD right here, y'all, this conversation with love, dog, hey, hey tell me about this. All right. <laughs> yeah, this was my baby. Um, I, it took me about three years because I was on the road, you know, trying to go from city to city when I was with Tyler. And we basically, we, after the show, go to the studio and just try to record as much as we could. And, uh, you know, with halfway do one song and get to another city, they don't have the right microphones, you know, all that kind of thing. But anyway, um, this was basically kind of geared toward talking about all the different types of love I've ever dealt with. You know, being in love, you know, losing somebody, um, trying to figure out uh, one, one particular cut, London Bridges, uh, where this girl I went to uh, school with in college, I was dating her, and she asked me to give up my music for her. And, you know, and I basically did a little skit on the song where I'm like, yo, like, that's not even going to happen. So... <laughs> You know, but it, I'm not the only person that's ever dealt with that. You know, when you're chasing your dreams, you're chasing something that God has given you, and then somebody tries to get in, in the middle of that because they're being selfish about what, what you're trying to do versus holding you up and pushing you and, and saying, go do it, you know. And uh, so that was just my first attempt to uh, spread love. You know what I mean? Well, it sounds good what you're saying. Now I want to see how you play this sax. So ladies and gentlemen, give it up right now for Mr. Ryan Kilgore. Thank <laughs> you. 
for Ryan Kilgore. You can check out his CD, Conversation with Love. Once again, we'll be right back. Say it, can I vent G? Show. This next uh, performer I have coming up, um, she's an excellent poet. I mean, she travels all over the world. She does a lot of stuff, and she represents Denver, Colorado. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Miss Ruckus. Yeah. How you feeling, Miss Lady? Feel good? good? That's good. That's good. Now, what, what made you get into doing this poetry thing? Because, you know, when I know you started off, you was a rapper. 
And then you, you know, you start putting the words, you start doing what you was doing. Well, I've always been a writer, been writing my whole life, but I've only been on the stage because you forced me to get on the stage. Um, you bust me out at one of these events, like, my friend writes, get her up here, reach your hands together. Like, wow, that's, that's messed up. But, but the rest is history, though, Lynn. We talk about this. Go ahead now. And I'm still doing the, the poetry thing. Um, I'm still rapping, still have a rap album coming out, half, rap, half poetry, also a children's book. It's coming out um, very shortly, so got a lot going on. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Now, I know you do the Passion of Poetry in Atlanta all the time. You travel all over. Um, I'm, you know what? I only want, we just gonna, well, I want you to give them your piece. What, what is this piece called? Um, I'm going to vent since, uh, since I'm on uh, the vent show. This piece is called um, D-Nan. You can call it uh, Do Nothing, Ain't Nothing. It's for people in your life that just don't do nothing. It ain't nothing. And it's not going to be too much. Well, uh, go ahead. Do the D-Nan. I see y'all. <laughs> Give it up for Ruckus. All right, so I'm going to make this brief. Like I said, um, this is for everybody. Everybody knows this person. You might be this person. Um, but hey, it is what it is. So just to make sure you guys are still OK, make sure the energy is still good in the crowd, I need y'all to work a little bit with me in the beginning, all right? Everybody know who Cab Calloway is? All right, so we're going to do D-Nan, the moocher, a little different. <clears throat> so, uh, so when I say D-N-A-N, y'all should be able to say D-N-A-N. Y'all got it? It's just acronym. Do nothing, ain't nothing. It's not hard. All right, so. D N A N D N A N D N A N D N A N D N A N D N A N D N A N well let me tell you about D N A N the Moocha. See, did you know? that the sound of you snapping sounds exactly like shaking free the last half-empty bowl of Captain Crunch. And you only got yourself to blame for letting people take too much. See, you let the mess go too far. The mathematics of it all is that for one day they came, yet for four days they stayed, that one outfit became faux. Faux somehow became mo, and then it just multiplied into two long. And now here you are either a prisoner or partial visitor to your own home because you either stay in your room whenever they're there, just most of the time stay gone. Now, it's just wrong. To be a grown person, sneaking company in your own house, tiptoeing past this sucker that for the past few months has been living on your damn couch, whispering at him, get out. Get something, get a job, and if not, then at least get up on your own two feet. Do something to support the roof that's been over your head or at least replace the food that you eat. And sadly, three quarters of us have experienced the same thing. In the summer, people come over and next thing you know, they're still there, welcome in spring. Then they drink up all your top shelf liquor. Leave you with booms and McCormick's and irk and jerk. And you got to come home from work to this sucker talking about, man, I am perv. Say, man, I, I used the last of the tissue in both of your bathrooms. I'd have bought more, but I didn't know what brand you used. Felt that I should run that past you. Now, it's been getting chilly. Uh, you really should have somebody take a look at your subpar shower. The pressure was way less than I expected, and the water went cold after only an hour. And oh, you're out of soap. In the future, I prefer liquid dial for my sensitive skin. It does the best. But if you really got to get that bar mess, please get oil of Olay, because I can't take no more of that zest. Hey, man, it's been getting chilly. Hope you really don't mind that I turned up your heat. Now, I know you're going to complain about your Excel bill, but that's why I got you this application, Philippe. Hey, <laughs> if you find your stuff, you go to your room, and it's a little out of place, don't panic. It was just me. I had some friends over, and, uh, you know, man, you got the biggest TV. And then you have this voice calling from the living room saying, can you loan me $40? I remember you said I'd have to put gas in it if I drove your Impala. I hope it's not a problem. I cooked your last pack of pork chops, but I put your plate in the oven. And I'm going to bring you some more Kool-Aid when I get back. So you pray for the God, <laughs> for the strength, not to kill your cousin, mother, lover, close family friend, anyone that comes to your house and their visit doesn't end. Got you hinting. It's a beautiful day today, isn't it? Nice day to get a job. Nice day to get a paper out and circle some apartments. Nice, nice day to get your dirty drawers up off my carpet. Nice day to do anything you think and make a profit. 
no result, so you drop it. Come down to Jazz and Jacks, try to escape the facts of life that the house guests that await you every day will be there waiting for you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a lot of people laughing, <laughs> some clapping. <laughs> if this was church, they shout too. If you're not smiling or testifying, this here is probably about you. <laughs> One hand or the other. Either you <laughs> are being leached up of or you are that lazy sucker. Now, I being ruckus, I'm always going to hit you with that realness. And if you are offended by this piece and you've got some issues to deal with, now simply stated, gentlemen and ladies, my public service announcement, if you are a grown-up, get your grown butt up and out your mama's houses. Get off your people's sofa. Get up on your own too like a grown-up is supposed to. And you, that rather call up to the heavens instead of opening up your mouth, is a proven fact. You get twice the bills and have the fun with a D-Nan in your house. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, y'all got to give it up for Ruckus. She has two CDs. Make sure you get it. She has the bipolar tendencies. And also, we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen, right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We have another jazz person coming up here, a jazz artist who, who's a good dude of mine. He's real cool, good friend, all the way from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Y'all give it up for Tony Exum. How you doing, Tony? I'm good, I'm good. You good, you good? All right, now you're in Colorado Springs now. Yeah, 719. 719, that's Thug too, 719, 719. <laughs> but that's what we're doing, so um, I love this album. Let's talk about, I'm getting straight to the chase. Tony Exum Jr. finally. Now, my, my song on here is a, is a, a T.E. Heartbreak. That's, that's cool. so, so tell me, tell me about T.E. Heartbreak. <sighs> I got a sigh first. Uh, I wrote it because um, when I was recording the album, I was going through a breakup. So, you know, this young lady, uh, kind of like what Ryan was saying earlier, you know, she was like, music or me. And uh, then she got her parents involved, and her parents was like, ah, he's a starving artist, leave him alone, you know. So uh, I was pretty heartbroken about it because I thought me and her was going to have something real. So, uh, And on top of that, I'm a big New Edition fan. I wanted to do something to pay homage to them. So I was like, T.E. Heartbreak, there it is. That's hot, hey. And it's, it's a hot song. Now, now, what made you really just get into to like music? Like, I mean, I know a lot of times some people, parents, and you know, be like, well, I want you to play this. No, I want you to play this. What made you get into music? Uh, I have, my mom's younger brother was a saxophone player also. His name was Larry Francis Jr., rest in peace. Um, he was in the Fort Carson Army bands and traveling around the world a little bit. So as a kid, I watched him when he was in high school play, you know, he would be in my grandmother's basement practicing like Ronnie Laws and Grover Washington songs. So uh, naturally, since I looked up to him so much, I wanted to be just like him. So uh, I started playing the saxophone and, you know, he gave me my first horn and I have it up on my wall, you know, in, in his memory. Well, I'm glad he did because um, you, you, you phenomenal. Are you going to do T.E. Heartbreak? Yes, yeah, this is it. <laughs> Y'all better be ready. This song right here is my favorite song off his Finally album. Y'all give it up performing my favorite song, T.E. Heartbreak. Give it up for Tony Exum Jr. Thank you. 
time for Mr. Tony Exum. I have been your host for the evening. Say, can I vent G for the show? God bless everybody. Can I vent.com. Thank y'all for coming. We have.